What is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Mosa La Torre. Join the family. Hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you as long as you promise. To always keep it positive and for today's look I am updating my no makeup makeup look I think that the no makeup makeup look is definitely something that I should update every year because new products come out that work better for the no makeup makeup look than what I used before and I feel like every year that I do it it looks more and more like a no makeup look I feel like the first one I ever did, it clearly looked like I was wearing makeup, but in my head, it looked like I wasn't. And now I feel like I've really refined my technique and skill, and I feel like this definitely just looks like a more refreshed version of myself and not like I'm wearing a ton of makeup. Also, my trusted, loyal Laura Mercier Secret Camouflage makes an appearance. You guys know I love this product, and a lot of you have picked it up and either love it or you're still like, Melissa, I cannot get this product to work for me. What am I doing wrong? I'm gonna be going over how to use this product in detail in today's video to have it look like a no makeup makeup look. I'm also gonna be sharing this new Dermalogica Prisma Protect SPF 30 Light Activated Skin Defense Moisturizer. As you guys know, I've been partnering with Dermalogica on some content. They are sponsoring today's video with this amazing new product, which not only protects from the sun, it also protects against blue light damage, which is a big thing nowadays, and I'm constantly on a screen, so I've really been diving in deep on blue light and its effects on the skin, and. Some of it's gonna shock you guys. I'm a really big advocate for sun protection because I have witnessed sun damage firsthand on my body, on my eyes. If you're watching this, this is still pre-surgery. I still have the sun damage on this eye, this little bubble that you see that kind of causes my eye to look somewhat irritated in some videos. That is sun damage from not wearing sunglasses growing up because I used to love showing off my eyes. Little did I know it would come back to bite me in the ass years later. <laughs> and I also had sunspots from sun damage that I recently had to get removed um, with IPL treatment. And I had to, I chose to get them removed because um, I had to always cover them up with secret camouflage. I worked at a tanning salon, so after every shift, I would take 10 minutes in a tanning bed you can't wear SPF and just sizzle my life away. And I was so crazy tan, I remember almost like, what on earth? <laughs> Why are you so dark? But I will never go in a tanning bed again. I now always protect my skin. I always use an SPF, like this one from Dermalogica. So I'm gonna go into detail as well on this moisturizer and all its benefits. So if you guys are interested, wanna learn a little more and see how I got this look, just keep on watching. First of all, if you're gonna be wearing this look during the day, which I'm assuming most of you are, your first line of defense, is an SPF moisturizer. Always apply your SPF, you guys. I cannot emphasize it enough. Take it from someone who is older and wiser, approaching 30, has had sun damage, had to get it removed, has sun damage on your eye. The sun has damaging effects on the skin. And this Dermalogica Prisma Protect SPF 30 Light Activated Skin Defense Moisturizer has SPF 30, so it's gonna protect your skin from sun damage, but also, blue light and pollution and I've been hearing this word blue light everywhere um, with blue light glasses to protect your eyes and now in skincare um, I've used a primer that has blue light defense in it and I decided to google it I'm like does blue light have damaging effects on the skin and cell phones and tablets emit blue light a high energy visible HEV light that can damage elasticity collagen and hyaluronic acid in the skin. Blue light damage can be doing more to your skin than you think. It's not just mobile devices that cause this kind of harm. But in all seriousness, guys, protect your skin from the elements. The easiest way, if you guys saw my Healthy Habits video, beginning of this year, I mentioned um, applying SPF daily should be a healthy habit that you do um, in your routine without having to really second guess it or really think about it. Um, I'll link that video up here for you guys. More Healthy Habits videos are coming. I decided for my next one to be on gym motivation and filming this video has been a process and a half. Um, so it's coming soon. I might just do it quarterly because also when I tried doing 12 Healthy Habits, it just seemed like a lot and they weren't as exciting or as substantial habits as it was to have four solid ones. So who knows, I might have more, but the next one definitely is on gym motivation. Side note. But <clears throat> protect your skin, guys, because it's better to 
take preventative measures than it is to have to correct it later and spend money on correcting it like I did with my IBL treatments. I have my eye surgery coming up to remove the sun damage on my eye. So adding or incorporating a moisturizer containing SPF like this one is such an easy way to take the, the smallest step in um, protecting your skin from future tamp from future damage. I used to always use MAC Face and Body for a no makeup makeup look. I still absolutely love that foundation. It's one of my favorites, but it does leave a really glossy, dewy finish to the skin. And then Dior came out with their backstage foundation and it, it has a very, very similar texture, same concept where you warm it up and it starts to build the coverage and get a little tackier. Um, but this one has more of a natural skin finish, so it's gonna give you it's gonna give you more of that no makeup makeup look without having to do um, a ton of additional steps like powder and whatnot. So this is the shade 2WO, which has a nice light olive undertone. I just take a little on the tip of my finger and I start working it in like I would a moisturizer. And instead of applying my concealer that I'm going to be using to my eyelids, I'm just going to apply a little bit of this foundation because it's going to look more natural than a, a concealer would on the lids. And after I've gotten it on there with my fingertips, I just take my beauty blender and blend out any streaking or fingerprints that I might have on my face. I feel like I should be able to get away with just using a corrector. I'm going to be using the Lancome Taunt It All Ultra Wear Camouflage Concealer shade 260 bisque but i'm going to use the smallest amount i'm going to use this lh305 brush and i'm only going to apply the concealer right here where we get that discoloration because of that little indent we have underneath our eyes it causes a shadow so i'm not going to bring it all the way up because that can also cause creasing up here you want to keep it to this area and then just blend it out so i'm taking the beauty blender and tapping it out in that area. And can you see the difference from this eye and this eye? See how that little bit of shadow just makes it, or that little indent makes it look darker underneath the eyes? All right, now with the Laura Mercier Secret Camouflage in shade SC4, this is by far my favorite shade because of this color on this side, it has more of that peachy, salmon -y undertone, which is gonna work to correct any redness or discoloration on those blemishes. This is more of a skin tone, and the reason this concealer comes with two colors is so that you can custom match the different uh, parts of your face. A lot of the times people see this product and they think it's a highlight contour product because one of the shades is lighter and the other is darker, um, but that's not, that's not what this product is at all. They purposely put two uh, different shades, one lighter and one darker, so that you could custom blend and mix the two shades in order to cover up the different parts of your face because not every part of your face is the same tone. So I'm gonna t I'm gonna show you guys, give you guys a little 101 lesson on how to use this secret camouflage concealer because I have been a loyalist to the product for years now. Basically, what you do is there's a Mika hair on my brush. You take a concealer brush. This one is also by Laura Mercier. I believe it is the Secret Camouflage Concealer Brush. But you pick up, you can do both at once or you can pick up one at a time and you warm it up on this part of your hand. And that action of working the concealer into the palm of your hand with the brush is gonna warm it up, break it down and make it look more skin-like when you apply it to the face. It's not gonna go on chalky. The main complaint I've gotten from people that have tried this product is that it looks so chalky and dry. But if you go from here to here, that is the finish you're gonna get. You're gonna get more of a chalky, dry look because this foundation concealer does dry down matte. And you want a matte concealer or foundation when you're trying to cover up texture because anything that is luminous, glowy, dewy, it's going to further accentuate that texture. So that is why I love this concealer so much. It's high coverage. You can custom um, match and the finish is just so beautiful when done correctly. So um, once I feel like I've gotten a good match, I'm gonna go ahead and apply it to my blemishes, especially this guy on my chin. Cover this blemish over here. And then this is my favorite brush to blend out the secret camouflage. I find that a brush keeps the coverage, whereas a sponge tends to shear it out because it starts to pick up the product um, with how damp 
uh, Beauty Blenders get. So this is the Morphe EA. It's the perfect texture. It's really light and fluffy. It doesn't disrupt what you've covered. <gasps> Oops, I had powder on this one. Um, but you want something that's really dense and fluffy and soft, not prickly because that will move around the concealer. And with a very, very light tapping motion, I'm just blending this into the rest of the skin. You know, you want to add a little bit of dimension, but not look so chiseled. So I'm going to be using the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate palette. This stuff is so good. Yes, it is worth the price. I know it's super expensive. All Tom Ford stuff is super expensive, but that's because it looks so, so good. It looks like skin. I'm going to use this blurring foundation brush by Smashbox instead. And again, dip directly into the contouring product. Sort of blend it out on the back of my arm so I get a nice even application when it touches my face. And I'm going to lightly, if it adds a little too much color, I'll go to the other side. And then work it up into the hairline as well. Applying it to the cheeks for a little bit of color right there on the cheeks too. And then I just switched over to an LH304 brush to add a little to the sides of the nose as well as underneath the lip. But I'm also going to add a little bit of this to the crease to contour the eyes. But again, not too much. I'm also gonna be using the Illuminate side on this palette to highlight just this area because it looks the most natural. Um, definitely not gonna highlight the nose or the Cupid's bow. And this finish is so nice. It looks white, but it's almost like a glaze. See that? To add the highlight, I'm gonna use the rounded side of the Beauty Blender and I'm gonna pick up the illuminate side the glow and I'm gonna tap it onto the high points of the face also a little bit on the brow bone always looks really pretty just like that but now that I'm done with all the skin product I can go ahead and set the face and I'm gonna be precise with my powder application because I don't want to powder down this really pretty glow that we've created but we definitely want to tone down the shine so I'm gonna start with the under eyes I have so many of the Laura Mercier translucent powders laying around in different bags on different counters because it's just such a good powder so I'm using the Laura Mercier translucent I'm going to first pick up the excess creasing my eyes my under eyes for some reason just crease up a lot with anything that I use, they just crease. So I always pick up the excess and I always have to really press powder into those areas that crease. If not, I will crease later in the day. And I actually really like the way Beauty Blender presses powder into the skin. So I'm gonna continue using it to set the rest of the center of the face where I'm a little too shiny and we don't wanna look oily. So I picked up um, the powder on the sponge. This is a damp Beauty Blender. I'm kind of tapping off the excess on the palm of my hand and then I'm going to press it onto the center of the face and anywhere else where I don't want to look shiny but keeping that glow on the high points of the cheeks. For the brows, what I have learned is that any additional color that you add when you're doing a no makeup makeup look is going to make it look, it's going to make your brows look too bold. Um, so what I recently discovered is this, I think it's new, the Sigma Prime and Control Brow Wax. It holds your brows in place, it makes them look feathery and uplifted, which is what I like. I like them to look very like bushy and feathery, and they still look very natural, they don't look overdone. So I'm gonna work this wax into my brows. You can literally go back and forth like this. I kind of just brush it on top. Well, I guess like both, let's do both. Just to really get the wax in there. And then I get a clean spoolie brush. This one is also by Sigma. It's the Sigma Brow & Lash E80 brush. And I'm gonna brush the brow hairs up. I'm gonna be using the NARS Brow Perfector in shade Naya. Medium cool brown. And for me, it's usually the tail that needs a little help. So I'm gonna add just a little to the back end over here. I'm gonna still try to add a little to the front right here. That's it, just like that, no more. And I'm gonna take that spoolie brush and brush it out one more time. I definitely recommend going with a brown black mascara. It looks way more natural than a is that a bug on my camera? A brown black looks way more natural than a full intense black mascara. And I'm only going to lightly wisp it onto my lashes. I'm not going to try and build them up, make them really thick and bold because it can also start to get clumpy and then look unnatural. I'm just going to lightly um, 
apply it to my lashes, keeping most of the product to the base and then lightly wisping it onto the ends. And before I finish this look with the lip, I'm gonna show you guys a really fun trick if you have a few blemishes and they're really stubborn and they're killing your vibe, we're gonna turn them into beauty marks. And I like using a dark brown for this as well because it looks more skin-like versus black. So I'm using the, it doesn't look as harsh, that's what it is. This is the Tardis uh, Double Take Eyeliner in brown, so it's a liquid and a pencil. I'm gonna use the liquid side. And the other day I covered up <laughs> this massive one. It's finally calmed down a bit, but it was real aggressive for a moment and I covered it up and Kyle's like, did you create a mole? I'm like, yes, yes I did. <laughs> so I'm gonna take uh, this pen and just lightly dab it wherever I have a blemish. And now it just looks like a freckle. I know it's a really fun way to cover up your blemishes, I think. Um, and then for the lip, I don't know what I used to use before. A lip balm is great. Tinted lip balm. I love Stark Naked Lip Liner with Hi-Fi Shine Gloss and Fuel by Urban Decay. Both are by Urban Decay. But what has really won me over, and I feel like I've been using it in a lot of tutorials recently, especially when I have on a really dramatic eye, the Fenty Gloss Balm. It's just, it does something so beautiful to your lips. It makes them look juicy, plump, hydrated, kissable. It's just the best, and it tastes so good. And without any lip liner, I'm just gonna go ahead and apply a very generous amount. All right, you guys, that is a wrap on this look. What do you think? Does this say no makeup makeup? I think it does. I think it's like a refreshing no makeup makeup look because this glow is so beautiful. I love all the products I use in today's tutorial. I feel like everything just worked so well together and I just feel like me, but a little bit better, a little more refreshed. Definitely my ideal no makeup makeup look. So comment down below if you guys have any products that you would recommend. What's your go-to no makeup makeup look? Do you have any staples like the Fenty Gloss Balm? Let me know, I'd love to check them out. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, share it, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys. Mwah.